Hey, what's up everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy and welcome to part 61 of my ultimate guide to Logic Pro. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use the Velocity Processor MIDI Effects plugin. And this is the final MIDI Effects plugin that we will cover in this course. And then we'll move on to some other advanced MIDI features in Logic Pro. The Velocity Processor is exactly what it sounds like. It allows you to process the velocities of MIDI recordings in different ways. You can apply a compressor or expander to the velocities, set a fixed value or a range to the velocities, and you can also add and scale the velocities. So I find this MIDI effects plugin incredibly helpful, especially when you're working with MIDI recordings that were actually played in and have some dynamic to them as this piano part does. But before I get into the tutorial, I wanna quickly tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Boombox. Are you looking for a better way to collaborate on your music projects? Look no further than boombox.io. Boombox's audio file commenting and collaboration tools allow musicians, musical artists, bands, and music producers to easily share files and provide time-stamped production notes and feedback. Upload single tracks, multi-tracks, or stems, invite collaborators to your project, and draw up contracts with their splits feature. Say goodbye to endless email chains and say hello to seamless collaboration with boombox.io. Sign up for a free account today and you'll get four gigabytes of free storage. Okay, so let's give this piano part a listen here. Again, this is something I played in. You can see all of my pedal automation in the background. The velocities are all over the place. So with the velocity processor bypassed, let's give this a listen. So I find the Velocity Processor really helpful for taking things like piano and, and other parts that need to have some dynamic, but you want to maybe level out their dynamics in a gentle way that still sounds realistic. Now, there are different processes for no on velocity versus no off velocity. To be honest with you, I never use no off velocity for anything. So, so unless you have a MIDI controller that actually records no off velocity and you're using a software instrument that actually does something with the no off velocity, there's really no need to use the no off velocity. So I'm just going to process the no on velocity. And then you can select what mode you want. So let's start with the compressor expander. Now, a lot of these controls will look a lot like a regular audio compressor. You have threshold, ratio, and makeup gain. So the threshold essentially sets where the signal is going to be compressed. So if you pull the threshold all the way up and then you set the ratio to one to one, essentially no compression is taking place. So the input and output signal are the same. As you pull this down and you pull up the ratio, more compression will be applied. So these are your input values and these are the output values. So an input value of say 127 is only gonna be maybe in the 60s with this setting. So it's really gonna pull down a lot of the louder velocities. Even those louder notes on the da 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 da, those notes uh, have been pulled down quite a bit. So maybe I wanna use a more gentle compression. I can pull down the threshold just a little bit, pull up the ratio just a little bit. And so the same thing applies here as with audio compression. A lower threshold and a higher ratio will, will result in more compression, and a higher threshold and lower ratio will result in less compression. But you also have to keep in mind that the threshold is not describing an audio level, it's describing a specific velocity level. So here with this setting, velocities at 92 and higher will be compressed, and velocities lower than 92 will not be compressed. Now, there is one caveat to this. The threshold here has a bit of a soft knee to it. 
So velocities around the threshold in that range will still be compressed, some that are slightly lower than 92, but it essentially functions the same way as an audio compressor would, except compressing velocity rather than audio levels. Yeah, so those upper values were, were pulled down a bit. Now, what you can do in addition, like let's say you want like a really uh, dynamically level piano part. What you could do is you could apply some heavier compression, something like this, and then you could use the makeup gain to pull up the velocity values overall. So really low velocities are going to be pulled up by the makeup gain. Higher velocities are going to be pulled down by the ratio and threshold but then even those higher velocities are gonna be pulled back up. So the overall velocity range is gonna be more narrow than the original uh, range that's one to 127. So something like that might sit better in a more dense mix with all of the velocities compressed and lifted up by the makeup gain, whereas the previous example might be better suited for, you know, solo piano and vocals. You can also click down here and you can set a note range minimum and maximum. Now you might think that this has to do with the velocities, but it actually doesn't. It has to do with the actual notes. So like if I only wanted to apply the uh, compression to a certain note range, I could set that note range here, and only MIDI note numbers 54 through 80 are going to be affected by the velocity processor. So you can see there's fewer notes there that are being affected. Whereas if I open this all the way up, you'll see more notes that are being affected. So this is helpful if like, if you only want to apply the compressor or the velocity processor to say the highest notes or maybe the lowest notes, that's a way to sort of, you know, make the velocities change only for a certain note range. Like, for example, if I only wanted the low notes, like below middle C, like the bass notes to be affected, I could totally do that. And then I could crank the ratio and threshold for those and really apply a lot of makeup gain. And that compression is only going to affect notes from 56 all the way down. So you can hear that the left hand notes are being affected, but the top notes are not. Um, now, I'm really exaggerating that, but if you have a player that's kind of soft handed or heavy handed in their right hand or soft handed or heavy handed in their left hand, this is a way to deal with that. Now, another way you can use this is as an expander. So if you pull the ratio down below one to one, now this expands the velocity range and notes on input that are, you know, in this area are now going to be pushed all the way up to 127. Now, that doesn't really work here, but if you have an example that maybe the dynamics are really narrow and there's a lot of notes at a similar dynamic, not the same dynamic, but a similar velocity, you can use this to expand the dynamics in the MIDI recording. I almost never use this, but it's there if you need it. Okay, so another mode is the value range mode. This is even simpler than the compressor. In value mode, all you're doing is you're setting all velocities to a fixed value. So this is a quick way to set 
all of the MIDI velocities on a track to the exact same value without having to go into the MIDI region, without having to go into the piano roll editor and manually edit those notes. So if I want all the notes to be 48, I can just set the value to 48. Or if you're working with synthesizer or electronic drum parts and you just want everything to be the same value or the max value, you can do that too. Now for piano, I don't want maximum velocity here, but you can apply a range to these velocities. And what this does is it sort of limits the low end and high end of the velocities. So if I pull up the bottom, this will set a minimum velocity. And if I pull down the top, this will set a maximum velocity. So this is kind of similar to the compressor, except it's not dynamically pushing down the velocities. It's just setting a low and high limiter range for the velocities. So again, the range sort of functions a lot like a limiter for the low range and high range. And lastly, we have the add scale mode. This is another pretty simple mode. I'm actually gonna talk about add first. Add just adds a velocity number to every single note. So if I set this to say 15, every single note is going to have 15 added to it. So a velocity of 50 is now 65. A velocity of 60 is now 75 a velocity of 70 is now 85. And likewise, you can pull the slider over to the left to subtract velocity values as well. So that's just a quick way to pull up or pull down the velocity overall. Now scale kind of does the same thing, but the way this works is just like uh, I showed you in a previous video, what you can do is you can select all of the notes and you can grab them and pull them up or down. So that would be scaling up the dynamics. That would be scaling down the dynamics. Now notice that they go up or they go down but also the range, the dynamic range between the notes is narrowed as you pull them down or uh, widened as you pull them up. So that's exactly what the scale slider does without you having to actually come in here and play with the dynamics. So I find this incredibly helpful if you have a MIDI recording that's just too loud overall and you just wanna sort of tame it back a bit or likewise, maybe you have a soft-handed player and you need to scale it up a bit to you know, make things uh, stand out a bit. Now again, I typically find myself just using the velocity compressor because most of the time, at least with piano, I just find myself wanting to take velocities that are in the higher range, like over 100 and just scaling them down a bit while leaving the vast majority of the other velocities alone. So that's the Velocity Processor MIDI Effects plugin in Logic Pro. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.